Thank you very much for the introduction. So it's a great pleasure to give this talk to the Institute of Advanced Studies and as a former student of the Collegio Superiore, which is an experience that really changed my life, I dare to say. And, um, and also that these lectures are in memory of Professor Battistini. Uh, just to share an anecdote. So I, uh, I was not a pupil of uh, Professor Battistini, but my mother was. So possibly back in the 1980s, so in the, my flat, I had already a book, which is the Toratore Scienza, which I, know, I knew before, joining the, uh, the Collegio, and, um, and, and here I am. Um, so I will start uh, um, uh, this talk about uh, experiments on uh, participation and performance in the workplace. As Professor Fraboni mentioned that uh, I'm a health economist and I worked on obesity. And, but in the last uh, five, six years, uh, I've done a lot of field work with, with firms. And this started from my interest in health economics uh, because uh, one of the first experiments which I will present today was on uh, healthcare workers in uh, care homes. So first of all, I need to thank my founders of these experiments, which usually are somehow expensive. So the first is uh, British Academy, which uh, funded the second experiment uh, and the Scottish Institute for Research in Economics, which funded uh, the first uh, experiment. Um, I will give you an outline of this presentation, which is aims to last uh, around uh, 45 uh, minutes. And um, uh, first I will give a broad introduction to both experiments about the motivation of, for this research topic and the methodologies of field experiments uh, in economics, as I understand that not everyone can, may be an economist here. And um, then I will go through the first experiment, which is titled No Recognition Without Participation. And uh, the context of the experiment is uh, care houses. And when we study healthcare assistants, we focus on the quality of the job of healthcare assistants and the impact that the non-monetary incentives have on their uh, performance. And uh, within this section, I will uh, present uh, first the experimental design and then the, the results. The second experiment is uh, related and uh, it's called contingent pay participation and uh, performance. And instead is a laboratory experiment, which I ran in uh, uh, Bologna in the BLESS laboratory. And the question is similar, it is the effect of participation of workers, but in a different, completely different setting, which is a data entry job, where, which is performed by students and not real workers in a setting which is multitasking, where there is a clear quality quantity trade-off and incentives are monetary instead of uh, non-monetary. And again here, first I will go through the experimental design and show uh, the results. Uh, it's worth uh, uh, mentioning that uh, um, all these experiments were conducted in Italy and with co-authors, which were at the University of Bologna, one of which is here, which is Professor Giulia in the first experiment and uh, Professor Ramondo Lorsini, both in the economics department uh, at the University of Bologna. And the second paper in studies with uh, uh, Ginevra Marandola, who is now at the Joint Research Center of the European uh, Commission, it was a former postdoc in Bologna um, too. Um, after presenting all these two uh, works, which are in distinct works, so they're not part of the same uh, uh, um, research, but they are part of the same research agenda, I will try to uh, give some conclusion and some messages to take home, uh, which connect the two uh, experiments. Okay. So as mentioned, so the, the main topic uh, of the talk is about uh, employee empowerment and uh, participation. And uh, what uh, actually uh, does it mean? Um, so we um, define uh, empowerment uh, as a transfer of authority from the management to employees to make uh, some decision and take some actions. And uh, this is relevant because there is an increasing number of organizations which are pursuing uh, uh, employee empowerment uh, programs. So there is some evidence that uh, at least 40% of employees in the US uh, report having some influence in firm decisions. Uh, and in Europe, uh, uh, in the uh, United Kingdom, 31% of workers 
report uh, some influence uh, in uh, firm decisions. And this type of programs uh, um, can be actually a package of very different uh, um, um, uh, details uh, and they can entail uh, monetary uh, rewards uh, or they can be within uh, uh, no monetary rewards. Uh, some of these could be uh, choices uh, over contracts, uh, or performance, uh, or choices over the nature of bonuses, for example, welfare programs uh, in firms, which is a topic of interest in Italy as well. So other programs instead not, are not embedded in, uh, in intrinsic rewards. For example, uh, you may know that like the employee of the week uh, program uh, uh, just rewards um, there's no monetary reward, just uh, something about uh, being proud uh, of uh, one's job or performance in front of the others or in front of your principals. So this, this links the, the two experiments. The first one again is uh, about uh, a setting where there is only a, a intrinsic rewards and the second one is about uh, uh, extrinsic rewards, okay. So why do firms want to increase participation if, if they wish so uh, um, in, um, in decision makings? Uh, one reason is to increase employee satisfaction so that the employees are more involved in the decision process in the firm. And uh, the second reason is also that this comes with some advantage for the firms. It is that, uh, first of all, there is uh, an informational advantage uh, because, uh, of course, uh, employees typically are uh, closer to the tasks that they perform rather than management, the management. And uh, ultimately, the, um, the idea is that uh, involving in, uh, employees improves one firm, firm's performance, which is clearly key to make the uh, incentive viable for, uh, for firms. So the... Uh, the main issue is that, so this is kind of uh, um, subjective perspective that can be read in some papers or just uh, in the field, but uh, there is little research actually, which is that is the topic in a rigorous uh, way. And uh, it's key to understand how and uh, whether empowerment programs actually work. And this is why we design, we have a research agenda on this, uh, and uh, there is little research even in economics. So these are two experiments, but actually we have uh, some more uh, that uh, you are work, we are working on now. The last uh, component of the motivation is in general, the study of incentives. So we know that incentive schemes sometimes uh, backfire and there is somehow still little understanding of how incentives in the workplace work. So the outcome of uh, somehow identical incentive scheme seems uh, to be dependent on the context uh, and sometimes the backfires. For example, there is a, a large bulk of research that shows that uh, performance-based incentives favor high ability workers and improve performance, but uh, the, they, are, they are not observed, so we can observe them so often in the, um, in the field, okay? Well, one explanation of this is that workers can be intrinsically or socially uh, motivated and they care beyond the extrinsic uh, rewards. And there's been uh, some large literature in economics of field experiments by Oriana Mantia that shows that uh, Social incentives actually reduce uh, free riding and uh, favor socially connected uh, workers. So the lesson from this uh, literature is actually that the organization can exploit a mix of extrinsic, intrinsic, and um, uh, social incentives. So this research hopefully has um, uh, implication uh, for actual ma management practices. So it has a real impact on uh, decision to, to manage uh, workers. Okay. So the key uh, yeah, research question is does the way the incentive scheme is introducing influence its uh, success? And so does participation uh, improve uh, workers' performer or does the absence of participation reduce uh, workers' performance? So these are not exactly symmetric questions. So in the first experiment, again, so we study 
uh, participation or monetary incentives uh, studying the introduction of, of a choice over a recognition scheme when the second experiment we study participation and the monetary incentives it is the choice of a remuneration scheme let me uh, uh, provide a few words about uh, natural field experiments in economics so wh what are they and what's the underlying methodology and why we call them experiments so this experiment involves uh, first of all uh, uh, interaction with the organization and practitioners uh, uh, in the field and uh, some skills to manage the party involved. So they are very risky projects because just uh, to get in touch with the firm and to start a project usually requires one, two years. And it is because uh, it's very difficult to convince firms to actually change their own practices in a field experiment because this has real impact on whether they perform well. So if the experiment uh, has a positive effect, it's good, but uh, if uh, something goes wrong, then uh, they have to justify a loss um, uh, in performance. And the key uh, point is that the, here, the researchers engineer the introduction of the, the treatments. And uh, so this allows really to be the, the treatment exogenous to what happens in, uh, in the firm. And it's unlike uh, somehow government policies. So government policies usually are introduced because they are motivated by some reason. So they are to some extent uh, endogenous to the environment. So even if they are large scale uh, natural experiments, uh, they, they don't benefit of this type of uh, exogeneity. That is that we can decide when to introduce the, uh, the treatment and how. And this again is the matter of bargaining with the, with the management. Um, the other key, uh, uh, element is that uh, in the natural field experiment, subjects are not aware of the experiment. So they don't know that uh, they are part uh, uh, of the experiments. And this uh, avoid uh, the so-called author uh, effects. So author effects are named after the first experiment uh, uh, where uh, some lights were switched on on workers. And just because the light was on, workers uh, were thought to produce uh, uh, more. So we don't want just uh, to, to study the effect of subject knowing to be part of experiments, but we want to get rid of this um, possibly confounding uh, factor. The another element is that uh, field experiments involve, of course, primary data collection. So they are unlike uh, other empirical research in economics, in which you study databases sourced by central banks um, and, uh, and so on. And uh, they study real jobs, so it's the real world with uh, real incentives which affect uh, all participants, uh, and subjects are uh, meaningful subjects. So the key difference with laboratory experiments is that usually they, are, they involve students rather than workers. And, and uh, of course, there are limits in the external validity of the interpretation of these laboratory experiments. Instead, the field experiments, natural field experiments, uh, are a real change in the real world. And the, the key, the difficult part of uh, experiments is to construct a proper counterfactual to identify the treatment uh, effect. And then this is uh, achieved through randomization or, to, uh, or together with the, the fact that the, the researcher uh, decides when to introduce uh, uh, the treatment and it does so exogenously. So this is a, a table uh, taken from uh, Liszt and Azul, which are two uh, world leading uh, field uh, experimental econo economists. And so the, our ex uh, uh, first experiment is uh, a natural field experiment, so which uh, ticks the the, um, the the factors that I've just explained. So on the left side, the, you can see non-experimental studies, which are just uh, uh, either secondary data research or other type of research. Um, then you can have a framed field experiments, which are the type uh, uh, of experiments which are in the field, but when workers know that they are part of some research. And then there are artifactual experiments. So these uh, are experiments which are maybe in the lab and they were participants play games, but at least participants are non-students. And finally, there are uh, um, um, laboratory experiments. 
and uh, which, which are only with students uh, and uh, maybe some of you have taken part of the experiments in Bologna. So an innovation that we brought in the second research that uh, I'm showing, so I'm not 100% sure that we are the only one, but the idea that I have was actually to have a field in the lab experiment. In other words, uh, uh, one limit of the laboratory experiment is usually they consist in games. So there are real tasks, are usually a kind of computing uh, uh, sums uh, or solving some equation. So they have no meaningful uh, effect. So what we did actually, we brought a job into the lab. And these are the benefits that uh, these students uh, are doing uh, real jobs, which is comparable to uh, what you can observe in the market. Uh, and this is the data entry uh, job. Okay, so this was to give uh, an overview of uh, the methodology. So let me move to the uh, uh, for first uh, experiment. Okay. And so what uh, we do here is to engineer a natural field experiment, and we have uh, 123 healthcare assistants in uh, three triplets care homes. Uh, which uh, were in the experiment for more than three months. And the, our key measurement uh, is the quality of the performance of uh, healthcare assistant. So what we do is to manipulate the introduction of non-monetary incentives. Uh, we, here we mean a recognition scheme where the principal congratulates the best employee in private. So it's something really soft. In the first care home, which we call uh, uh, bottom up, we introduced this scheme through employees' empowerment and uh, participation. In other words, we have them choose uh, the type of scheme to be introduced. In a second care home, instead, we imposed the introduction of this scheme top down. That is, the management arrives one day and uh, says to the employees, we will have this new scheme. And finally, we had the third care home, which is a, a control group where there is no recognition scheme, but we still record the, the quality of performance of the healthcare system. So let me use some spoilers. So what are the key findings? So empowerment is key for incentives not to, to backfire. So in the care home where there was no empowerment, uh, the performance uh, uh, was uh, sharply reduced. So the, the employees provided the uh, lower quality. So however, when we confront, con compare the uh, uh, bottom-up group with the control group, uh, we did not observe a real uh, uh, improvement in uh, performance. So um, we will go through these uh, details uh, uh, soon. So what's, what's new in our research? Where the, what's the additional step that uh, we uh, build with this research? First of all, there is new field evidence on the theme of empowerment. And it's well known in management, uh, psychological uh, literature, and uh, for example, self-determination theory on Ryan and Desi. And there is a pioneering experiment, which is a, a framed field experiment in uh, 1969 uh, which finds a positive effect of participation. But again, it was framed. And uh, there are other experiments in the lab about uh, choosing monetary compensation, but there is nothing about extrinsic uh, uh, motivation. Um, there is another contribution about the labor economics literature. So we, we have experiments, but these experiments are mostly focused on the uh, fixed time workers, which are unskilled like picking strawberries in the fields, which is not the large majority of uh, uh, type of employment that we have nowadays. So in this setting, instead, we have uh, permanent workers, which are skilled workers, which is a healthcare assistant. Uh, um, we focus on a quality uh, aspect of the performance rather than quantity, which is not really relevant in the healthcare assistant job. And uh, the, the tasks are complex. So there are many facets and they're not just simple fruit picking or data entry like in the second experiment. And finally, many field experiments tend to be run in uh, uh, developing countries because it's easier to do so. And uh, instead, this is an international country, which is Italy. Um, there is a growing literature as well on recognition in the workplace and we contribute also to that because we have a recognition scheme and again we hint that 
the disempowerment the, may actually undermine uh, um, incentives. Okay. So some more theory uh, to base, uh, which is our work is based on. Uh, at the moment, I've used the, the terms empowerment and participation in, uh, and, uh, as uh, interchangeably. But uh, so th there is a definition in economics about power, and uh, which is that a case in which the management is capable of affecting employees' ease actions in ways that further the management interest, while employees lack this capacity with respect to the management. So empowerment uh, entails uh, this partial transfer of authority from the management to the employees to make some decisions and take some actions. It's actually a subset of a participation, and but somehow the terms empowerment may, may sound too strong when the, the transfer of authority is uh, very mild. And uh, this is our case because we are just transferring power on uh, this deciding uh, which type of recognition scheme you uh, an employee can choose. So it's not a huge power. So what are the types of um, advantages that it can confer to the firm? The first one, which I mentioned, is the informational advantage. That is, employees are in direct contact with the tasks to be done and related problems, unlike the management. So uh, transferring authority may improve the performance in this sense. And the other one is a motivational advantage. So the fact of being in control of one's work may lead to psychological improvement, uh, reduce the cost of effort of working, and improve the worker satisfaction. So this goes under a set of theories, which are procedural fairness, uh, theory of gift exchange, and the mentioned self-determination theory. So the real point is that it's difficult to distinguish between the increase in performance due to better information and increase due to higher uh, workers' uh, motivation. And we try to do so by choosing uh, the, the setting of these experiments. And the underlying idea of all these theories is that the empowerment should improve performance. That is, empowerment is something uh, positive. Um, so what, what is uh, our setting? Um, we are working uh, with a large nonprofit firm with 1,500 employees, uh, which has been 22 years in the market and uh, has a turnover of 9 million euro um, around every year with uh, about 800 end users. They have 11 facilities for elderly people, and uh, which include the furnished room, meals, uh, and like uh, all uh, uh, care homes. And we ran the experiment in three of these 11 care facilities, which are distinct and geographically uh, distant, which is about one hour by car. So this allows uh, to have no uh, contamination between uh, the treatment in the various care homes. And, and there are 250 end users in, the, in these uh, care homes in which we are running the experiment. Okay. So this shows how the uh, residential services uh, uh, area organization works. So there is a head of residential services, which is an area manager, and then each care home has a principal. And so the only people to know about the experiment was were the area manager and uh, the principals of care home. And they were instructed not to reveal the experiment to uh, uh, in the lower part of the hierarchy. Then. Uh, uh, all three care homes have three units, and each unit has a unit uh, leader, and a head nurse uh, takes care of the uh, three units. Uh, we chose these three care homes because they are triplets. So they are very similar in terms of residence, architecture, organization, and nurses uh, that staff all units. So they are uh, good comparisons uh, uh, for, for each other. And again, they are again under the umbrella of the same uh, organization. So what are healthcare assistants? So these are uh, called in Italian operatori sociosanitari and they have a professional profile which uh, um, requires a one year diploma with a 1000 hour course, uh, which includes a tutor internship. They are not nurses, so they can administer independently drugs, uh, and, uh, but mostly are permanent employees or nonprofit members. There are no promotion prospects. They have a quite low turnover in the workplace and they work on eight hour shift on a rotation of two to one, which is morning, afternoon and night. And 
the work uh, in teams, but mostly in the individual, the contribution to the job is uh, individual. So one critical point for our research is how to measure the, um, the performance of a healthcare assistant. And this was done to measure a number of mistakes. Um, so the, the advantage of this the, uh, setting is that the, the quantitative part of the performance is fixed. So there is a given number of care residents all time in, uh, uh, in the care homes and the operations timing is fixed, it can be changed and it's already at its limit. And the other advantage is that the healthcare assistant and the unit leaders are uh, trained to keep a continuous record of mistakes. And this is just for record keeping or for insurance uh, purposes. And so in this uh, uh, experiments, we measure not just the number of mistakes, but also the type of uh, objective mistakes, which are uh, 50 different categories plus an upper field for other types of mistakes. And everything is highly standardized across all the three uh, um, care homes. There is a large health economics literature on this. Um, and unit leaders continuously check uh, the healthcare assistant uh, works. Okay. So let's go to the uh, experimental uh, design. So there are three main treatments. So one is the mentioned bottom-up uh, uh, treatment. So all uh, healthcare assistant uh, receive a salary, which is a flat rate monthly salary, which is uh, uh, somehow uh, fixed. And uh, uh, on top of this, uh, in the bottom of treatment, we give uh, the possibility of choosing the type of a performance-based normality recognition scheme. For example, uh, could be on play of the week, rankings, individual recognition by the house principal and so on. In the top-down treatment instead, uh, we impose the, the same scheme chosen in the first house uh, through the head of the area uh, principal. Okay, so this is why it's top down. So the employees don't have a word about uh, um, choosing the type of incentive. Finally, in the control treatment, we just record the mistakes, but there is no recognition scheme, which is what happens um, uh, in a, as a matter of course. So the, just to give you an example, so this was the menu where the, uh, um, the uh, healthcare assistant could choose uh, the type of uh, no monetary scheme, which could be a public board displaying uh, weekly rankings of uh, healthcare assistants, which uh, uh, made uh, fewer mistakes uh, or uh, only the top three healthcare assistants uh, or a private meeting uh, with, with the principal. So the one that they selected as uh, in the process was the, to have a private one-to-one -one meeting with the principal for the best healthcare assistant of the week uh, across the entire care home. So what are the challenges uh, of the design? So as, as mentioned, one reason for uh, introducing uh, uh, participation is that uh, that the firm could uh, have information advantage and psychological motivation. So however, in this case, the, the empowerment does not result in information advantage uh, for the healthcare assistant. So we can uh, safely say that this is about an experiment about the psychological motivation uh, part. Other concerns is that uh, uh, it's not true that there are no monetary incentives because there are still career concerns. That is, if you perform badly, even if there is not immediate penalty or bonus, then there is still a career concern. But of course, this is not possible in this setting because there is no career development for uh, um, a healthcare assistant and either there is no termination for uh, performing a, somehow a small number of uh, mistakes. The third problem is contamination. Is a healthcare assistant in principle, if they work uh, in uh, different care homes, uh, but they work uh, nearby, then they could, could share with the colleagues what's happening in their care home. But this again can happen because they are uh, uh, far away one from each other and there is no contact between the uh, care assistant in the three homes. And finally, to uh, 
to, to have a, a sound control group, so we need to check that uh, the, the, the characteristics of each chromes are balanced. That is, that they actually real uh, triple chromes and, uh, at, uh, and, and, um, and the, we can actually compare them. Uh, we, we did this and actually they, they are very similar one to each other and uh, pass uh, statistical tests of uh, balance of graph variates. And finally, the, the, there might be author effects. So you, we, we are, we are uh, actually introducing the, the, something new with the experiment. So we wanted to test that what we observe is not just uh, the introduction of something new, but it's really the fact of participation. Okay. So now this is the uh, more sophisticated timeline um, of, the, um, of the experiment, which lasted for 14 weeks. So in the first uh, uh, two weeks, um, we uh, recorded in a hidden form the performance of the healthcare assistants. In other words, the unit leaders, which were the recorders, then were recording mistakes, but they wouldn't tell actually the healthcare assistant that they would keep track on a paper um, of the mistakes. Okay. So after two weeks, we introduced a, a spreadsheet, which uh, was uh, publicized to all uh, um, uh, healthcare assistant. And uh, in, during these three weeks, we would uh, record only the mistakes, but with no consequences for the healthcare assistants. So at the end of week five, and so the, the, the main point of comparing these two uh, periods is to check for author effects to see if there is a change in performance just because we are observing the performance in a different way than they were used before. So before that there was a, a, a notebook where they would keep the mistakes, but it was kept in a very informal way. Instead we introduce a, a, a spreadsheet to take uh, note of this. So at the end of week five, we, uh, we introduced the key point of the, uh, of the experiment. So on Wednesday of week five, uh, the the principal of the organization area goes to the bottom up uh, uh, care home and may as a meeting with all uh, healthcare assistants where they vote which recognition type they prefer to introduce. So they have no choice about uh, whether they introduce it or not. The only choice is about the type of the recognition scheme. The day after, once this was chosen, the, the principal goes to the uh, uh, top down care home and the, uh, she has a, a similar meeting, but it leaves no choice about, to the employee about uh, the type of recognition scheme. Okay. So the key difference between these two treatments, again, is the participation. In one case, uh, the healthcare system could participate in the choice, in the other, they could not. From week six to nine, we, we start uh, the, the proper treatment uh, uh, Effect that is, we, we introduce, we start uh, assigning the recognition to the best uh, uh, healthcare assistant in the two treatment uh, care homes, and there is no uh, recognition in the control uh, um, uh, home. So, this is the core of our research. So, comparing uh, the performance uh, uh, in these two p relative performance in these two periods, uh, we would like to find the effect of empowerment and participation. Finally, uh, after four weeks, we removed the recognition scheme, but we kept the, the, um, the recording of mistakes. So this to check whether if there is a kind of persistence of behavior after removing the recognition scheme. So after going back to a record only uh, situation. Okay. Um, so some uh, overview of the results. So uh, I will present mostly descriptive statistics uh, because uh, uh, okay, but these results are assigned also to uh, regressions and econometric specifications. So the, the three lines represent uh, the uh, uh, average number of mistakes uh, 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 per week in the um, uh, sorry in the in the care homes, and so the green line is the top-down treatment. The blue line is the control group and the red line is the bottom-up uh, uh, treatment. 
So in the, the first two weeks, you can see the uh, mistakes uh, with the hidden monitoring. That is with the hidden record of uh, mistakes. You can see that uh, more or less that uh, the number of mistakes are similar across the, the three weeks, uh, which also is uh, reassuring in the sense that means that the uh, recording of mistakes is uh, uh, objective across the, the, um, the care homes. So then uh, at the end of week uh, two, uh, so yeah, it's week one because we start from zero, it's uh, we introduced the, uh, the spreadsheet and you can see that uh, the, the, just the introduction of the spreadsheet drives down the number of mistakes uh, in, the, um, in, the, in, the, in the following three weeks. Okay, so this, this is the author effect. That is the, just for the fact that you are measured, even if there is no consequence, the, and the healthcare system started to behave uh, in a better way. And in the, in the following panel, then we have the three treatments. And uh, this was somehow unexpected for us uh, when we were planning the experiment. But you can see that uh, in the, in the top-down treatment, the number of mistakes per week uh, just uh, skyrockets. So there are much more uh, mistakes in the top-down treatment while in the bottom-up and control group, they stay at a uh, very low level, like in the pre-treatment uh, uh, period. And uh, so the, the, you, you can imagine that this is, the, without seeing, watching uh, regressions, uh, you can see that this is uh, statistically significant. And, uh, and finally, when uh, we remove the, the, uh, the recognition scheme, the top-down uh, um, um, uh, care homes stayed on higher levels than the other two um, care homes. Okay, so this is, this is uh, so our, our core finding. So in the, uh, introducing the recognition scheme uh, on the top uh, in a top-down way has uh, adverse effects on uh, performance. Um, uh, let me show you also some other data. Which is, these are uh, estimates of the distribution of the mistakes. So in the in the different periods, and comparing the three different uh, um, uh, so these are kernel, kernel density estimates. So if you look at the left panel, which is the hidden record period, you can see that the distribution is somehow uh, similar across the three uh, kernels, which is good again because it means that they are similar, and and the same uh, applies for the uh, record period. So you can see that there is slightly longer tails uh, and the number of mistakes for all the care homes, but the behavior is the same because the, it's the, the same uh, uh, change applies to all the three care homes. So if you move forward, then we compare the uh, record period, that is when there is only recording uh, the mistakes with the treatment period. And here you can see that there is a big difference in the distribution of the top-down uh, mistakes. And so there is a long tail of uh, uh, people who are making a lot of mistakes. Uh, and in general, the, the average number of mistakes goes up, while the bottom-up uh, and control group uh, basically have the same except uh, the distribution when you got to estimates to that. And uh, finally, we compare the treatment period with the post-treatment period. And again, distribution of mistakes uh, stays different for the um, uh, top-down care home, meaning that there is a persistent effect of uh, uh, adverse effect of uh, not using uh, participation. Okay. So yeah, this the econometrics, but uh, I can skip it. And uh, so the, the, the next question uh, uh, we, wanted to answer was, okay, we will find this effect and uh, this is the, um, this is an adverse effect. So what, what's the channel through which this effect works? So this experiment was not designed to, to uncover in a causal way this channel. However, we have some hints uh, looking at the uh, mistakes, the type of mistakes that actually the, the healthcare system do. So there are, uh, we, um, um, uh, grouped the mistakes in three types, which is uh, mistakes uh, which affect uh, the residents, uh, so the elderly people, mistakes uh, which affect the management and procedures like filling reports, planning uh, work, respecting procedures. And uh, the third type is against uh, uh, peers, like colleagues or 
um, um, uh, people in the organization and, uh, and so on, like uh, quarreling with colleagues, uh, not respecting the uniform, uh, taking long breaks uh, for cigarettes and so on. So what uh, we, uh, a suggestion that uh, uh, the possible channel is that, uh, so actually the, the, in the top-down uh, house, many of the mistakes were against the organization and not really against the, the residents, which gives a kind of a direction of the of reasons why the mistakes increase. So it's kind of form of upset against the management that did include the, the the, um, the worker in the participation. However, it, this is not fully clear because if you when you look at the persistence, then it, there is a significant effect also in the, in the, of the treatment against the, um, 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 mistakes towards uh, clients. Okay. So let's uh, sum up uh, uh, this experiment. So the um, the in the top-down treatment, there is an increase in mistakes, and this is highly significant and persistent, even if after the recognition scheme is uh, withdrawn. So there, um, there is an increase of um, a one, a one about around one mistake for treatment, and in the on average mistakes, uh, uh, they increase by two point five. So if you consider this, these are the weekly mistakes. It's uh, it's quite a large uh, increase. And um, we found that there is no uh, significant effect uh, of the bottom-up treatment uh, compared to the control. That is, participation doesn't have a positive effect with respect to the control treatment. And this could be because either recognition has no effect itself, or because the, uh, when we get to the um, treatment, uh, there are many ethical systems actually did no mistakes. So we are in a kind of zero lower bound. So it's impossible to, uh, uh, to reduce further the mistakes. And so we uh, made a conjecture, which is the, the reason why it happens is procedural fairness. That is a kind of a reciprocity to the, the management to introduce to that introduce the new recognition scheme uh, 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 top down. And uh, then in the regression analysis, we, we find uh, uh, intuitive effect of education and professional qualification and uh, other controls are non-significant. That is, they don't determine the outcome as we would expect if the three groups uh, were uh, balanced. Okay, so this is the uh, take home message for this. So um, in this case, top down management was detrimental to firms' performance in conjunction with the, the recognition scheme. And it's a kind of practice to keep in mind in the industrial relations, because we can think that uh, it's something good to introduce the recognition scheme, but if you don't do it in the right way, actually it backfires. And uh, so what, uh, 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 after this research, uh, uh, there were two important avenues that uh, we wanted to follow, and the first one is unexplored. So we had reported that actually this even mild recognition scheme was very important for the healthcare assistant. So some cried because they were recognized that uh, they were the best healthcare assistant. This didn't happen uh, uh, before, and it is one of the reasons why one wants to introduce uh, participation schemes, not just because of the firm performance, but also because maybe it improves uh, the workers' well-being. That was not clearly the case in the uh, top-down uh, firm. And finally, uh, then uh, this was a non-monetary incentive, so we wanted to see what happens if instead the uh, participation is introduced in the setting of uh, uh, monetary incentives, which is the next uh, uh, experiment. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll go slightly quicker in uh, this one because you know the, the background so hopefully I will keep uh, uh, my timing and uh, uh, so this experiment is called contingent pay participation and performance is uh, with Ginevra Marandolo is at the European Commission so the uh, such question here is that uh, does the possibility to choose a, the compensation scheme increase productivity and potentially reduce the uh, multitasking problem? 
So here we study a data entry setting in which uh, the students in the treatment can choose whether they want to be uh, remunerated with a piece rate scheme, which pays per character, or um, um, a flat rate scheme, which is a hourly pay for the job. And um, so uh, the idea is that, uh, as before, if the participation increases uh, motivation and effort, by introducing a, a choice mechanism for these schemes, uh, we should observe a positive effect both uh, on the quantity, that is, number of characters uh, input by the students and quality. Okay. So this is a context of uh, multitasking and uh, the, with uh, high power incentives, which is a piece rate. So it's different than the previous job. And uh, the key element is that it's a multitasking problem. There is a trade-off between uh, quality and quantity, and is a, a large literature in economics, by, uh, which uh, uh, shows that uh, the agent, in, uh, if you incentivize only qu quantity, for example, then the agents will uh, focus on the being very quick, but uh, reducing the quality of the job because it's not uh, uh, remunerated. Okay. And in this way, uh, high powered incentive may backfire and it may explain why they're not so used. However, the, there is uh, mixed evidence. So despite this being the theory, uh, there are several studies that show that uh, there are various settings in which uh, we don't observe the multitasking problem. In particular, Coswell showed that uh, when there is a meaningful task, uh, like the one in our experiment, uh, the multitasking problem does not arise. So um, what, what, what's the summary of the experiment? As mentioned in the beginning, it's a real job, but in the lab. So you should have a kind of more external validity than the ordinary experiments. And it's a one-off, one-hour real data entry job. So it's kind of an internet job uh, where you hire someone to make data entry uh, online. And there are two uh, remuneration scheme, piece rates and flat payments, uh, and a very precise uh, um, record of productivity and quality, uh, because again, that it's uh, um, inputting a survey uh, and then we can check it uh, with a high precision. There were 363 participants in the lab, last lab in Bologna, and uh, we changed two dimensions of the design. Uh, one is the compensation scheme. So there were some groups uh, with flat wages and other with peace rates. And one is the whether the uh, compensation scheme was chosen. That is, it was imposed at the beginning of the session or whether the uh, students could choose uh, uh, how to be paid. And this was determined through uh, voting in groups of three. So it was uh, democratically, democratically chosen by uh, small groups. Just, just to show you how the uh, experiment worked. So on the left, you have the real um, uh, survey, which we use for another experiment. So it was a real job. And uh, we would tell this to students that, that, that they were working for something meaningful. And then students have to input in the form on the right, uh, the, the information uh, on the left. So it's a difficult job because as you can see, it's, uh, it's complicated to, to uh, input the, the information uh, correctly. So the design uh, had two main uh, treatment. So at the center, you can see the baseline uh, treatment. So uh, the first step is that students are randomly assigned to uh, a piece rate of flat session. So this is critical uh, because it's uh, the way in which we randomize students. So some students just arrived at a session and they had to work under a piece rate and another session they would work under a flat uh, uh, rate and they could not decide uh, that. So after uh, arrival, they would have a trial in which they could test uh, the, the data entry. So we would measure also their baseline skills in data entry. And then uh, they are assigned to one uh, or to the compensation scheme and they are just informed like in the top-down treatment in the previous experiment. Finally, we, we measured also the risk aversion of the subject uh, and then uh, we have them, had them work for 60 minutes and, uh, uh, um, and uh, compile, sorry, and fill a questionnaire at the, at the end. The participation treatment uh, has the similar structure, but instead of being assigned to uh, um, uh, 
the piece or flat rate uh, compensation scheme, the subject could vote uh, which compensation scheme they would uh, uh, choose, whether to go on a piece rate or flat session. And they add the information about the piece rate and their performance so they could make a meaningful decision. Finally, there is a last treatment uh, which uh, we introduced to uh, uh, test the menu effects. So the, in, the last treatment is similar to the participation treatment, but instead of uh, uh, subjects being uh, able to choose the compensation schemes, they were shown that there were two different schemes, flat and piece rates, and then they were uh, randomized over the compensation schemes. Okay. So this is different from the baseline treatment because in the baseline treatment, students uh, uh, were in a, in a piece rate session wouldn't know that the, there is the, the, an option actually to have a flat rate in another session. And so the, 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 uh, the reason why I introduced this is because maybe the, the effect uh, of, the, of the behavior of a participant uh, was driven not really by the, the, the choice of the compensation schemes, but by the fact that they could see another option. So by randomizing that, uh, we, uh, uh, we can test whether that's actually the case. So it's, if it's a menu effect instead of a participation effect. So going over uh, results, then uh, this is the preferences over the compensation schemes. So you can see that 64% of students uh, would prefer to have a flat rate and 36 a piece rate. And uh, the next, uh, uh, graph shows that uh, uh, how many uh, in the press uh, who prefer the flat scheme actually were able to work on the flat scheme, which is 87%, while 13% were a minority in the group. That is, they voted to uh, work on the flat scheme, but and they ended up working uh, under a piece rate scheme. And you can see that there is an asymmetry between the two so, um, uh, groups, so 40% in the piece rate actually were an IPL. Oh, this is also because, because as you have seen, uh, there are fewer people were, were happy to work under the, the piece rate. Okay. So results. So this is our uh, baseline treatment. So the students who, who work uh, uh, under either the flat or the piece rate contract. And uh, as you can see, uh, in the students in the piece rate have a much higher uh, speed in, uh, in writing the uh, in, the in filling the forms, uh, but the quality is not so different. So this is somehow unexpected, and because uh, according to multitasking theory, that uh, we should have uh, uh, a decrease, a sharp decrease in quality, and actually we didn't uh, observe that. So the first finding is that uh, actually we we find no evidence of the multitasking problem. Instead, when we look at the participation treatment, uh, that is when uh, they can choose the scheme, so again, you can see that there is even a, a larger differential in the performance in uh, quantity so that uh, the speed is higher, but actually we can observe the multitasking problem. So the quality is uh, uh, lower than in the flat uh, uh, scheme. Okay, so this is our core finding. So there is an adverse effect in this, set, in this setting to, uh, of introducing uh, participation. And it is that uh, the, it, uh, once in the baseline setting there was no multitasking problem, here it is introduced. And uh, so let me show some other uh, statistics about the distribution. So these are the distribution of uh, average entries. And um, you can see the dashed lines um, are the piece rates. So you can see the average speeds are uh, higher for both uh, the participation uh, um, uh, and, the, uh, and the, um, for the participation treatment in both the um, uh, piece rate and the flat uh, um, rate. And this is the distribution of quality. And here you can see that uh, the, the baseline piece rate uh, as a higher quality than the participation uh, uh, piece rate. And the participation piece rate is uh, more dispersed with compared to the baseline. Okay. So what, what that, again, so the, the question is, uh, what can be the interpretation of these results? Okay, so there, there can be um, several explanations. One is sorting. So once you allow uh, students to choose the greedy, less motivated subject, uh, can self-select in the piece rate. 
Okay, so it may be that they are just uh, performing uh, lower quality because they 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 are uh, allowed to do so. Why in the uh, in the baseline they could not? They were just randomized. So we we, we proved that this is not uh, the case. So we studied the fact of selection uh, through a uh, novel methodology by Dalbo. And we can see that uh, even accounting for self-selection, there is still a huge uh, fact which is due to participation. So another explanation is the one I mentioned in the beginning, which is a, a student's have reference point. So the, once you introduce a menu, the payoff under the flat rate becomes the reference point to reach. But again, uh, uh, when we look, uh, we compare the participation treatment where the reference treatment, that is where the students can see the menu, but they are randomized. The reference treatment is no way similar to participation, but it is more similar to the baseline, which is there is no, no evidence of the multitasking effect as in the baseline. So this is something specific to participation and doesn't depend on menu effects. In similar ways, another explanation, which is again ruled out by the randomization, is that uh, the, once you make a choice, then uh, you, uh, it makes the compensation more salient and uh, then crowds out uh, the non-monetary incentives that uh, you have. So, and so we should, if that was the case, we should observe similar behavior in the reference treatment and the participation uh, treatment because they, they could see say, the, uh, the, the other um, payment. Um, so our final explanation is actually related to the, the, the key element that we introduced that we used to give meaningfulness to the task. So the, the, uh, since we can rule out somehow all other explanations, the, the, uh, the idea is that uh, introducing the paper for performance uh, crowds out uh, the, uh, the fact that the task is meaningful so that you are doing something for some higher end uh, research and some research uh, project because you focus then instead of maximizing uh, your, uh, um, um, uh, your profits. So um, conclusions. Um, so we have seen two uh, distinct uh, uh, pieces of research which are somehow uh, closely linked. So the, 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 the overall take home message is to, uh, it's a cautionary tale about participation. It is it can backfire. And so uh, for example, with the higher power incentives, can crowd out uh, motivation, uh, the, the meaningfulness of the task, and it can uh, bring back the multitasking uh, uh, problem. And uh, again, it's difficult to generalize outside this, but uh, you can imagine a set of instances in which this happens. And then in the first experiments, instead, we found a positive side of uh, uh, participation, just the absence of participation has a, a negative effect. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the, these are two completely different settings. And as you can have seen from this uh, presentation, uh, participation actually is a package of different items. So we tried to single out uh, elements of participation, but of course there is much work to be done to actually to have a full picture of what are actually the channels and how they work maybe in, the, in different uh, settings. Okay, thank you very much for listening to uh, this. Even if there is uh, any uh, question, I'm happy to uh, answer. <laughs>